Somerset got back to winning ways in this season's Friends Life T20 competition by producing an important 64-run win over Glamorgan in Taunton. Marcus North inserted after winning the toss, only to watch Craig Keyswetter get off to an aggressive start with the bat. He took 16 runs off Michael Hogan's first over and then smashed Graham Wagg for 13 in the next. With Marcus Truscothic missing through injury, Somerset gave a rare start to Chris Jones, who also added to the early mayhem with a six of his own, as Somerset brought up the 50 in the fourth over. Some smart cricket from Nick James and Mark Wallace saw the back of Keyswetter for 37, but only after he and Jones had started with a stand of 56 of the first 27 balls. The big hitting continued, sending our camera momentarily into spasm. Peter Trigo with the latest maximum, as he and Jones raced the total along to 71 before the latter drove Dean Koska to wag to depart for a quickfire 20. Trigo then kept the momentum with his team by getting to 30 off 23 balls, only to then to get too much under a shot off Nathan McCullum to give Wag a catch, a wicket which left Somerset on 111 for three after 12 overs. Nick Compton fell in the 13th, bowled by Koska for 19. While James Hildreth failed to clear the rope off McCullum, giving Alex Jones a catch instead at 127 for five, with 28 balls of the innings remaining. Incredibly, Somerset hit 72 runs from them to take the game away from their opponents. Craig Mercedes has been a thorn in Glamorgan's side already this year. He struck James for successive sixes. But it was Josh Butler who really shone out, producing the kind of knock that he's become famous for. There's been some speculation about his future at Somerset this week, but here his mind was fully focused on the job at hand as he played some exceptional shots in what was an exceptional innings. We've all seen Butler do this kind of thing before, but that still doesn't stop you from asking how it's possible. James's last over went for 27 before 39 runs were struck off the last two overs, Butler racing to 48 off 19 balls to take his side to a formidable 199 for six, Koska escaping the carnage with two for 18. Formidable it may have been, but for a while it looked as if Glamorgan were going to chase it down, as Jim Allenby also produced something rather remarkable. Steve Kirby suffered at his hands first to be followed by Alfonso Thomas, whose first over cost 14 as the Welshmen raced to their first 50 in the sixth over. Allenby was taking the game by the scruff of its neck, and he was doing it almost alone. Max Waller's first ball was also struck for six as Allenby brought up his own half century off 29 deliveries, getting that in an opening stand of 73. That was brought to an end at the end of the eighth over when Wallace on 11 drove Waller out to Butler, a man who could do no wrong. The dangerous Chris Cook fell in the next over, edging Mercedes be behind after scoring only a single. So Allenby's innings was becoming more significant. At the halfway stage, 88 runs were on the board and he had 66 of them. But then on 69, he clubbed Waller to Hildreth at long on to leave with his side still requiring 106 of the last nine overs. Wickets inevitably fell in the pursuit of 12 runs per over. Murray Goodwin gave Waller his third wicket in the same over that Allenby was out in. While Wag was bowled by Trigo, slower ball in the next one, leaving Glamorgan 100 to get of the last seven overs. The game was just about up. North now had to produce a Butler-type innings. But after he'd pulled Waller for a maximum, the bowler got his revenge with a stunning catch of his own bowling. Many of us wouldn't have caught that in slow motion. Even in slow motion, it went to Waller quickly. He ended with four for 27 from his four overs. Glamorgan fell away after that. McCullum drove Kirby off an open face to the wonderful Waller. James chipped Yasser Arafat out to Thomas in the deep. Koska was caught at Cow Corner by Hildreth to give the acting captain Thomas a wicket on what was a good night for him. Especially when Jones was superbly yorked by Arafat as Glamorgan were dismissed at the start of the 19th over for 135, their last eight wickets falling for 41 runs after Allenby was out. After three straight defeats, it was a much-needed win for Somerset who took the game by 64 runs. They've now won three and lost three, while Glamorgan, after a brilliant start, have now tasted defeat in their last two games. They now head to Cheltenham on Sunday to take on Gloucestershire, 
while Somerset stay at home for the visit of Warwickshire on the same day.